where are all these clients? I need people. I want to be a freelancer, but no one is hiring me. <gasps> I'm so overworked. Freelancing is not what it seems to be. If you've been either one of those before, or maybe a mixture of both, you are definitely not alone. I know when I first started out in my software development journey, one of the things that I kept on having this dream image of, or this idea in my head, is that I would travel the world and be a freelance developer, and life would be great, and I'd be a millionaire. Well, I don't know if I thought that extreme, but I was definitely in the mindset of doing freelance. Fast forward to early on in my career, I did do some freelance, and it did not go as expected. Today I'm going to share with you why freelance development is not, or freelancing in general, whether you are a developer, UI UX designer, uh, anyone really in the tech space will value from or get value from this video. And going to share with you my experience as when I was doing freelance and then why it didn't work for me, what I would do different, different tips and tricks along the way. All right, let's dive into it. But before we do, make sure to hit that subscribe button for more tech coding and career related content. And let's do this. Before we fully dive into different tips or things I would do different if I was to freelance again, I want to share with you my failed experience as a freelance developer and what really went wrong and why it went wrong. For me, when I started out my development career and I was working for a company, but also to really early on in my stage of uh, development and coding, I thought, you know what, I know the basics. I, I'm pretty proficient, I think. I work for a company, I can develop large websites. I should be start doing this for others. And I didn't know where to start. That's the first problem I ran into. I, I thought, where do I go on one of these online freelancing resources? Do I talk to my mom and see if her friends need a website? Like, where is this network? And that was an issue that came whether it was the chicken or the egg, meaning I want to work, but I need to find clients. But in order to find clients, I have to work. This kind of circular thing that kept on going on. So for me, what I did was I started by utilizing my own network. So I literally made work for myself, meaning I knew my dad needed a website. He owned a construction company and I thought, you know what, I'm gonna get you a website. He maybe didn't need one. Uh, his business was far along, that was more word of mouth at that point, but I thought this is a great opportunity for me to build and then also to have something in my freelancing developer portfolio to show others that, hey, look, I built this site for this big construction company, I can do this for you too. And so that's how I really started was by making my own work. And honestly, I do think that is a great way for anyone to start if they are wondering or having that same issue as they don't know where to start, they don't have that work necessarily, necessarily, although it's not going to pay right out of the gate, but it's a great way to kind of appear as though you're working, like have, have that magical or myth about you and then others see that and they go, hey, she or he or whomever is building for that person, I want them to build for me too. And that's really how I got my first start in uh, freelancing and development or freelancing with development. And then from there, it was more so always through word of mouth. So it was through some friends who needed websites, but it was always pretty small things. Now here is why for me it didn't work. For me there was a few reasons. I realized a lot about myself as I was early on in my career. One being, I like to work in teams. I like to work with others. And freelancing, although you can go to co-working spaces or maybe you have some friends that are freelancers, it is more independent work typically than working at a company. And I realized quickly that I liked to collaborate with others, bounce ideas off with others, and that was one of the main issues I quickly ran into with trying to freelance. Another thing I ran into was I ask a lot of questions. I like to know everything about everything before I fully build it or if I fail at building it, I want to know why I failed and really dive into it. Asking a lot of questions as a freelance developer or once again, any role in freelance is hard to do when you are just starting out because you oftentimes don't have that community support or maybe you don't have that network of other freelancers to help support you by answering those questions. For me anyways, I definitely didn't have any friends who were freelancers or very few anyways. And I was more so, I had the, I solved the problem of finding people to develop for. I was able to find that through my network, people who needed projects, but I was really lacking that community or mentorship that would help me succeed as a freelancer. Those are the two main things that made me realize very early on I did not want to do freelancing. I think if I was to look back, maybe I would do things now. I wouldn't do things different. But I do think that that's important to recognize right out of the gate. 
which is honestly almost more important than having a huge network of people to develop projects for, is having a community or understanding if you are someone who needs that community to support you. If you get stuck on a coding question or a coding problem as you are building or whatever kind of field you are working in, when you get stuck on a problem, it's not like when you are at a large company and you have tons of people to help you. You are on your own. You need to figure it out on your own or build that community on your own. Next, let's talk about pay. How do you know how much to charge a client when you are just starting out. Now, if you're using one of these websites or a freelancing site, there might be some suggestions there. You can also sometimes, not always, but sometimes see what others are charging and go based on that. But here's my biggest tip or what really has helped me when it comes to when I was freelancing for the development side of things or if I am taking on an independent client for developer relations, what I do now. What I will do is I will simply ask others, meaning if I see someone else in this space doing similar work, Work, I will reach out to them on LinkedIn. Now you might be thinking, Tiff, that is super nosy. No one's going to give you their rates and prices, but you will be surprised how many people are kind of the opposite. A lot of times people, when they are in the freelancing or entrepreneurial world, they do not want their services to be devalued. And if there is a bunch of individuals coming into their space and charging way less, it naturally over time will devalue the industry services rates. Now what this does is by being transparent about their salaries or their pricing, it allows for everyone to be educated and informed of how much to charge. Now a really great way to make this less intimidating or personal is the right word, or, or feel like you're really getting nosy, is to ask it in a way where you are asking for their advice. So rather than just being like, how much do you charge? reach out to them on LinkedIn, set up a Zoom call, ensure you are aligned before the Zoom call that they know what they will be covering. You don't wanna spring this on them. And frame it in a way where you are saying you are just starting out as a freelancer, these are your skill sets, here is your portfolio. What advice would they give you or what suggestions could they give you as to what to charge? This takes the pressure off of them having to share what they are charging because frankly, there are so many factors that go into it. Maybe they're more experienced, they have uh, really strong relationships with their clients, different things like that. But they will give you an accurate sense of based on where you are at, what you should charge. And if you reach out to a few people in the same space you are working in, after a while you will definitely see a pattern. I like this way more than just searching it up online because it feels more personable. Also times too, you're building a new connection which sometimes can result in them saying they have a client that would be really good for you. Maybe they charge too much and a client is looking for more of someone who is just starting out and uh, they can refer you to that person. It just feels much more personable and you also get a lot out of the call other than just oh, how much you should charge. They give different pieces of advice, different things like that. Uh, so just, I know it sounds difficult to do reaching out to people. It's, it's tough and it's weird and it's scary, but honestly, it almost always pays off. All right, so we have pricing down. We understand how to price our projects. One of the biggest things though that you really need to keep in mind is having that support. And I kind of touched on this earlier, but for me, one of the biggest things that was missing is having that community support. I know for myself, I am part of a lot of DevRel Slack groups and discords, and honestly, they are so motivating and supportive. When I have questions, people are always answering right away. And it makes it feel like if I did do something completely on my own, and go back out to freelancing, I would have that support. And for me personally, if you are someone who is thinking about freelancing and where to start, even before getting your first client, build that relationship with the community, with other freelancers, because you are guaranteed at some point when you have your first client to get stuck along the way, to find errors in your code, to face different challenges. And if you don't have a community or at least one or two other mentors to really help back you up and guide you through that process, it will be very difficult and you will fail very quickly. Once again, this is not that you have to go out and find this grandiose mentor and all this. I, For me, just going online in different communities really has helped and you will find that support. So community, if you're trying to go into freelancing all on your own and not having anyone to support you or guide you along the way, it's going to be a lonely and very painful journey. And honestly, I don't know if you would succeed or it'd take a very, if you're advanced, it's different. But when you're starting out, that community aspect is key. Let's talk, oh, ow, that really hurt. Let's talk about projects. How do you find your first project or your first client or, or how do you, it's one of those chicken or the eggs things like I mentioned before. 
you want to work, but you need a project to showcase or a portfolio to showcase. And one of the biggest pieces of advice that someone gave me is have your portfolio as a story piece. What do I mean by that? Ensure that when someone comes, a future client comes to your portfolio, they're able to see that you are with them from beginning to end. You really were supportive throughout the process of developing it, whether it be a website, an app, and that you genuinely cared. And oftentimes this comes across best through a story. You could do this by starting out with the problem that your client is facing, how you were able to resolve this problem and work through it together, for example. Definitely when you are showcasing different projects on your portfolio, think quality over quantity, meaning even if you have one or two really interesting uh, pieces that you can add to your portfolio with a really unique story, it's way better than trying to say, oh, I have so many projects that I've built, but they're kind of like not really fully spec'd out. Quality is absolutely everything. At the end of the day, when you are freelancing, you need to understand you are doing so much more than just the skill set that you might be passionate about. When you are going into a freelancing role, whether it be UI, UX, development, whatever the case is, you are also, just as an FYI, becoming an accountant, a business owner, uh, you are com you know, community support, you're helping the client with any support issues they run into, you're going to be updating the site if that's something you offer, which you should. And also too, there's a ton of back and forth. So if you are someone who just likes to do a certain skill set and be done for the day, freelancing is definitely not the way to go for you because it really is about entrepreneurship and taking your business to the next level. Let's talk reputation. Someone once told me that your reputation precedes you. And I think that is so true. People oftentimes will, if they've heard about you, will know and have an idea of who you are or think they know who you are before they even meet you. This is oftentimes based on word of mouth, based on reputation. This is so key to remember when you are getting into the world of freelance too, because a lot of times when you are starting out with one client and it's going great, but if you break your reputation, you cannot think to yourself, oh, this one client's a one-off, it will never get back to others, it will. It might not be a week, it might not be a month, but it will. It's a small industry, especially in the freelance world in tech, and your reputation really does precede you. Now, the opposite is true too. If you start with one client and they really enjoy you, they are so much likely, more likely to refer you to a friend or another business. It might not be immediately after, but there will be at some point a referral from them. And this is a really common trickle effect. Then you work with them, they have a great experience, and then before you know it, you do not have to do any advertising or promotion for your freelance work. Which by the way, you might be asking, well Tiff, do I do a freelancing website or get on a freelancing platform? And at the end of the day, it's up to you. As I mentioned for myself, I really, I don't know what it was, but I just wasn't drawn to it, I think because of all the fees that uh, the platforms take and also to, I just, it just didn't feel right for me. So what I did was, once again, start out more of the organic way where I built a website for my dad and then through that, he shared it with his network. I got another client. Once again, that might not always be the case for individuals. And then definitely go check out some of these freelancing platforms that we're all familiar with. Right, I hope that really helps you and gives you a sense of what to expect when you are freelancing. It's not just focusing on the skill you are, uh, hoping to focus on, it's running a full business, it's managing people, it's managing people's crazy expectations sometimes and how to make sure they're aligned properly. And I don't want this video to be about scaring you away from freelancing because there are so much great opportunities within it, but I think it's important to take it slow, take it one step at a time. Maybe you start with one client while you're still working a full-time job, or while you're still in school, but I know everyone's different, but I would highly recommend in this situation to not just jump off the deep end by completely quitting your job, completely quitting school, and just going right into freelancing. Just start small, see if it is for you, because oftentimes it's something that is glamorized, when in reality there is a lot of work to it and you really need to look at it as being your own business owner. All right, I hope you enjoyed this. I'm curious to hear though, where are you at in your freelancing career? Are you someone interested in freelancing? What are some questions you have that maybe I didn't cover? Leave in the comments and let's answer each other's questions and uh, this is really loud. And uh, go from there. All right, hit that subscribe button. Thank you all for watching and I'll see you soon. Thanks everyone.